it'll be interesting to see how quick someone try, tries to capitalize on this becoming a, a therapy like SS31. Well, I've, I've recommended it to f- drug designers. If you want to bring a drug to market, this is the one, but you need clinical trials. The problem is you make a lot of other medications obsolete if it turns out to be something good because it lowers hemoglobin A1C. It improves blood glucose, it lowers triglycerides, and it improves body composition. And it might even preserve muscle mass by upregulating, you know, uh, mitochondrial function. I'm intrigued. I mean, even with with SLU, not really knowing fully the the half-life and the bioavailability. I think when, you know, I've done a breakdown on the pharmacology of it Mm -hmm. um, from a a medicinal chemistry perspective and how the, the drug is created. You've got a phenol and typically phenol based drugs have quite rapid uh, phase one clearance. So mm-hmm. all of a sudden your bioavailability of the compound is is limited uh, from a, a metabo- metabolism perspective, a metabolic first pass. But on the other side of it, in terms of um, the bioavailability of being absorbed from the gut. So you have to view, you swallow it orally. In theory, you've got the amide bond uh, and, and the imine that can be hydrolyzed by stomach acid, but it does look like it's in terms of the, the PKA of that being hydrolyzed. It's, it's in a position where it should pass from the stomach down. Mm-hmm. How it gets absorbed in the gut based on the, the phenol and the, the naphthalene structure. Um, it, it's, it, it, you'd anticipate somewhere around 50 to 60% bioavailability from the gut absorbed across. Mm-hmm. But if you're absorbing, let's say it is, if you've done a big bolus dose of 400 milligrams, let's say 50, 60% of it is absorbed into the bloodstream. First pass metabolism based on the phenol could be quite quick. Um, that when you have seen people dose it throughout the day, there, yeah, is that's some, what I did. Yeah. there is some merit to that and that you're keeping the drugs level consistently topped up. Um, but I am just, I'm just really intrigued based on PDK and PDH, the, the interaction of long-term free fatty acid oxidation on mitochondria energetics mm-hmm. it, it, it could be something that then turns into uh, gly- excessive glycolysis in the cytoplasm mm-hmm. because your your mitochondria's efficiency to use glucose goes down so you head more towards a warburg effect of the cell which can be linked to cancer and uh, affect just glucose utilization by cells if PDK4 activity is switched on and PDH can't work properly, you're not bringing acetyl-CoA in into the TCA cycle to feed into the electron transport chain that if you starve cells of glucose, like the heart or, or the brain, in theory, there could be some cellular dysfunction that comes off that. So um, I'm intrigued. I think if if it works based on what, you know, anecdotally 600 micrograms max for me. And to be honest, like I said, I ran this sort of experiment for a long time, it was over 12 months at that low, low exposure. I will be doing advanced markers soon. Um, but based on that long-term exposure, the risk probably still is the same of the the high uh, dose exposure yeah. that you know it, it, to me the the sweet spot with these compounds from from looking at it is potentially short term like eight to twelve weeks get your benefit get out yeah and then mm-hmm. and then see what sustains from it yeah and they rely on mod c and ss31 if you want to boost mitochondrial function in the long term because those well ss31 is now fda approved actually um yeah as ben ben da, ben dava or lm I don't know about the petite. <laughs> I know. So a, yeah, it's unpronounceable, dude, these names. Uh, for, uh, it's a pediatric uh, disease. I, I I remember reading the, the application approval because there is no 
it's basically an inherited mitochondrial dysfunction and there's no there's no known therapy for correcting it mm-hmm. that ss31 based on what the data says of improving mitochondrial efficiency it's sort of like well yeah we, we're going to approve this for, as like a an off-label adjunct to this disease that has no uh, cure i can't remember the name of it for me in the fda uh, yeah it's approval. been a while since i read the studies um yeah it's it's very promising though but yeah, the SS, uh, the SLU, I know it's not really, I don't think there's any more data. I think the last study was like one and a half years ago. And, and since everybody started experimenting with it, besides that one study that uh, Kurt found about uh, exercise memetics not really being exercise memetics, <laughs> <laughs> which we talked about the last podcast, um, this hasn't been any new data on it. Um, yeah. Let me ask you this, Steve. How was your blood pressure taking a high dose SLU? Because there was Didn't a budge. paper. No, the re- reason, reason why I'm asking is there's a paper from last year that suggests SLU PP332 mechanistically could be uh, an anti uh, COVD therapy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because of, um, of, it, of it lowering yeah. ACE2 expression. So yeah. it can have positive mm-hmm. effects as an ACE2 inhibitor. I didn't notice anything, but then again, I used Thomas Hartan, so, mm-hmm. so you know, you know that because I'm on one and a half grams of gear, so it's better to control it. This sense. If, if someone isn't using, you know, an A or B or an ACE high, and they decide to run that high dose, that might prove some of that theory. It was just a, a plausible mechanistic paper, mm-hmm. wasn't? This is going to have great impacts on blood pressure control, but one of the things where that what we can do is lower ACE2 expression that can impact that pathogenesis, SLU, boost your mitochondria, which can improve, obviously, your, your metabolism, improve, obviously, uh, immune function, and and secondary lower ACE2 and the angiotensin uh, activation, angiotensin 2 activation that can feed into right. what, what that causes. It's weird that SLU PP815 was never brought to market. That was shown to have like all kinds of benefits in chronic kidney disease. And you've got SLUPP, I think it's 1008, is it? From 2020 was another one. Yeah, it's what, an older what, one, yeah. What was studied towards um, improving uh, prostate cancer. Oh. So I had anti-cancer All the high benefits. mass guys are looking forward to that one. <laughs> <laughs> I had, had anti, anti-prostate cancer effects by... Uh, inhibiting metabolic pathways that play into prostate cancer. So oh. yeah, they're, they're really interesting. I mean, the, the scaffold of the drug, I think 2014 was when they isolated the the Pharmaco 4 of like the, the imine bridge and the, the naphthalene ring. But it's, it'll be interesting to see how quick someone try, tries to capitalize on this becoming a, a therapy like SS31. Well, I've, I've recommended it to f- drug designers uh, you know, so this is if if you want to bring a drug to market, this is the one. But you need clinical trials. Problem is, you make a lot of other medications obsolete if it turns out to be something good because it lowers hemoglobin A one C, it improves blood glucose, it lowers triglycerides, <laughs> right? And it improves body composition. Um, so, and it might even preserve muscle mass by upregulating, you know, uh, mitochondrial function. So it seems to be multifaceted in that sense. It's lipophilic, so you, you have to make tablets or injectable, but injectable mm-hmm. that doesn't go in MCT. If the people that make it do it in DMSO, it's, I wouldn't want to inject that. No. And even That's, improving with, with the phenol, again, I covered this in the, in the lecture, looking at improving a potential drug delivery mechanisms where you make it you know, more lipophilic or you encapsulate it inside like a liposome yeah, or you, mm-hmm. you change. Again, we don't know, is SLU PP332 the actual active molecule creating the effect or is it a, a pro-drug that the phenol, the phenol yeah. gets metabolized and it creates the active component that just because the phenols and OH and it's normally classically linked with increased sulfation. I think um, one of the, one of the first two studies is a pharmacokinetics and dynamics study, but I can't remember if they investigated metabolites as well. I, I don't remember reading it now. I could be wrong, but 
Mm. Uh, you know, just classically looking at drug design, phenols. Normally, if your your active drug is a phenol, you'd you'd protect it as a pro drug, and then it creates the phenol after first pass metabolism. Um, yeah, be, I'm 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 intrigued. You know, as, as much as people feel that there's some level again of emotion of you're just like let's just be very careful if you're going to do this you're doing it at your own risk rather than saying yeah. someone said it mm. on the internet I, I ran low dose for a year now up to one milligram and this this 400 milligrams split over four servings of 100 milligrams uh for eight or nine weeks after ramping up the dose i did like one milligram two milligrams a couple days five milligrams ten milligrams 20 milligrams 50 milligrams right and then just continuously ramping it up till i saw some negative thing occur and besides bouts of hypoglycemia Glycemia. that's that's it that's it yeah and it was expensive <laughs> it was pretty expensive but not as expensive as getting it from i got it directly <laughs> from china not as expensive as buying over the counter uh pre-bottled so so uh the blood work is more expensive than the, the the four rounds of blood work like before during after and then two weeks after to see if anything changed which my triglycerides came up slightly lipids stayed pretty much the same so i wanted to see what would happen after i discontinued this drug like if i would spontaneously combust or melt or or freeze over right <laughs> well you don't take the slupp332 anymore your mitochondria are now dead and the yeah, figure it out soon enough you know you're completely reliant on it now you stop and it's game over so yeah. but nothing really changed which is very positive so again it proves into yeah. that short burst cycles take advantage of it exit and assess yeah yeah because the energy levels and the fat loss that i sustained was insane <laughs> man insane yeah 